Hi, and welcome to the complete course on Pandas for Absolute Beginners. We're going to start by discussing what is Pandas. Well, Pandas is an open source data analysis library for analyzing, cleaning, exploring, and manipulating of data. If you are thinking about data science and machine learning as a career, then it is essential that one of the first things you have to do is to learn the Pandas library. So in this course, I do recommend you have some experience coding in Python. You don't have to be the top level software engineer, but you should have some bases such as list, tuples, dictionaries, functions, and iterations. And if you want to get your hands on Python, I also recommend you check out my Python mastery course for absolute beginners. I will drop the link in the video description. And on that note, let's begin by setting up our development environment and also getting pandas installed on our computer. After that, then we would be ready to do some coding and analysis. Now let's head over to anaconda.com. We're going to be using the Anaconda software distribution to set up our own development environment for this course. So Anaconda is an open source distribution of the Python and R programming language. And the distribution also comes with over 250 packages automatically installed. So here is the download button for you to save the software on your machine. And you can also download for either Windows, Mac, or the Linux operating system. And when it's done downloading, open the package and install on your machine. Then come back and follow along with me. All right. Now, after the installation, press the command key plus spacebar if you are on a Mac computer, and then type in Anaconda Navigator, and then hit enter. Or you can go in the application tab and here is the Anaconda Navigator, then double click to open. So now, if you are on a Windows machine, open up the search bar and then type in Anaconda Navigator and then click on the icon to open. Now, here is our Anaconda Navigator and here you can also find other tools used for data analytics and machine learning. But in our case, we're going to be using the Jupyter Notebook. So click on the launch button to open up the notebook and the Jupyter Notebook is going to open in our default browser of our computer. So here are the files and folders inside my computer hard drive. Yours might look quite different due to our operating system. So I'm going to go to my desktop folder and as you can see, my desktop folder is actually empty. Then I'm going to create a new folder. Let's call it pandas course and then hit enter back to my browser then here is our new folder i just created from my desktop so now let's create our first python notebook so i'm going to click on new under the notebook i'm going to click on python 3 all right so here is our python jupyter notebook so you can click here to rename the notebook. Let's say 01 pandas, then click on rename. Now our Jupyter notebook has been renamed. And here on this cell is where we're going to be writing and executing our Python code for pandas. You can click on the plus button here to insert a new cell below. And inside the cell, we're going to write our Python code like print parentheses, then hello world. So to execute this cell, we're going to click on the run button above our cell. And here is our hello world statement printed out on our notebook. And also Jupyter notebook automatically added a new cell below our print statement. So now let's actually import pandas into our notebook. So above our print statement, I'm going to say import pandas as pd. So pd here is going to be the alias we're going to be referring to pandas throughout the course of these lessons. So 
To execute this cell, instead of using the run button here, we can also use a shortcut. We're going to hold the Alt key and then press the Enter key. Now we've imported pandas. And if you notice, our selected cell here is highlighted as blue color, which means the cell is not active for us to write Python code. So when I click inside the cell or hit the Enter key, then the cell becomes active with a green color. So now that we've imported pandas into our notebook, let's now see how we can load in the dataset that we're going to be exploring. So I'm going to erase this print statement. Then I'm going to create a heading. So click on code here, then select markdown. So inside the cell, I'm going to add the hash symbol and then type in load data. Then execute the cell using shift plus space. So to load the data, I have compiled the data set we're going to be exploring. So head over to my GitHub page and then click on the complete pandas course repository. This repository contains the resources we're going to be using in this course, which includes all the data sets and also the Jupyter notebook for our analysis. And I'm also going to drop the link to this repository in the video description so that you can just go ahead and download. So you can click on code here and then click on download zip here to save the whole repository to your machine. And when it's done downloading, extract the folder and then copy out the data folder. So on my desktop, inside our pandas course folder, I'm going to paste the data folder we just copied. So inside the data folder, we have our data which is called sales.csv. So when working with pandas, we will often load data in different file types and not just CSV files. So your data might be in CSV files, Excel's or even JSON files. But now we're going to be loading a CSV file into our notebook. So back to our Jupyter notebook. Now, we're going to write the code to load in the cell CSV file we just downloaded. I'm going to say pd.read underscore and then press the tab key. So here are all the file types that you can read in using pandas. So in our case, I'm going to select the read CSV parentheses and in between the parentheses, I'm going to add single quote and then we're going to pass in the file path of our CSV file. Now, if you remember, our CSV file is located inside the data of our project. So I'm going to pass in data, then forward slash sales.csv. And then press shift enter to execute the cell. So here is our data loaded into our Jupyter notebook. So one cool thing about Jupyter Notebook is that it allows us to visualize data. And when we scroll down below, then we can see that our data has 4,200 rows of data and then 11 columns. And these columns are the state, total expenses, product, and so on. So let's store our CSV file in a separate variable. Let's call it data and then execute the cell. So now if we want to have a look of our data, then we can say data then dot head method and then run the code. So the dot head method returns the first five rows of our data. And you can also pass in a value if you want to see a certain number of rows. Then we can pass in the value 10 to our data.head method. When we run the cell, then this gives us the first 10 rows of our data. And as you can see, it goes down from 0 to 9. Now, let's say you want to see the last rows of the data instead of the first 5 rows. Then we can use the tail method instead. So if we say data.tail, then parentheses, and then run the cell. 
then we also get back the last five rows of our data. And also, just as the head method, we can pass in a number like 10. And we also get back the last 10 rows of our data. However, let's say we want to check to see the number of rows and columns of our data. Then we're going to say data, then the dot shape attribute. So remember not to put parentheses at the end and then run the cell. So as you can see, our data has about 4,200 rows and then 11 columns. So in this lecture, we learned how to set up our Jupyter Notebook with Pandas and also loading in our data into Jupyter Notebook. So in the next lecture, we're going to be looking at data frames and also learn about the series data type in pandas so on that note don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button to support this channel see you in the next lecture take care welcome to this lecture on pandas data frame and series so the data we loaded into our jupyter notebook in the previous lecture is currently saved as a pandas data frame object and every data frame object has a shape attribute that will give us the number of rows and columns of the data frame so we call the data.shape attribute and the shape attribute returns a tuple where the first value is the number of rows and the second number is the number of columns so to begin I'm going to change my cell here to Markdown, then create a comment, which is going to read pandas data frames and series, and then run the cell. However, let's actually check to see the type of this data variable. So I can say type parentheses and then pass in data. When we execute the cell, then we get pandas.core.frame dot data frame meaning the data we loaded using pandas is actually called a data frame and you can think of a data frame as a tabular data structure very similar to a spreadsheet but if we observe our data frame we can see that each column contains different individual data types so for example if we say data then core dot info method and then run the cell so the dot info method in pandas provide us with some basic information regarding our data frame we can see the total number of columns and also data types of those individual columns of the data frame so our state column is of type object however we can think of this object as normal python strings and you can also see that columns like total expenses, sales, profits are of type int64, which also stands for integer in Python. And in the upcoming tutorials, we're going to be exploring how to change data types in Python. So when working with float or integer data types in pandas, another handy feature is the describe method. When I say data and then dot describe parentheses and then run the cell. Then we get some statistical information regarding our data. And this statistical information includes the number of counts or entries of the data. And also we have the mean value of the columns, standard deviation, then the mean, which stands for the minimum values of each column. Then we have the 25%, 50% and 75%. And lastly, we have the max, which means the maximum value of the columns. But one thing to note here is that this statistical information of our data are based on the numerical columns of our data frame, which are the total expenses, sales, profit, marketing, and then the inventory. Now let's actually create our own data frame from another kind of data type in Python. 
I'm going to show you how you can convert a Python list and dictionaries into a data frame. So let's start by using the Python list. We're going to create a variable called insert and set it equals to square brackets. And in between the square brackets, we're going to add some names of insects. So for the first item, I'm going to pass in ant, then secondly, a comma, and then single quote, then cricket, comma, and lastly, b. Now, here is our Python list of insects. And if I say type, then parentheses, and then pass in the insert variable. And when I run the code, then we see that it's actually a Python list. So if we want to convert this Python list into a data frame, I'm going to say pd then dot data frame. And in between the parentheses, I'm going to pass in our insect variable. And when I run the code, then we get back a pandas data frame with a single column. And if you notice, we actually don't have the name of our column. So pandas automatically added zero to represent the column name. But to give our column a name, I'm going to add a comma and then columns equals to square brackets. And in between the square brackets, I'm going to pass in single quote, then the name insect. When I execute the cell, then we see the name of our column modified as insect. So we can also store our data frame in a variable. Let's call it data underscore insert equals to our data frame. And when I call data underscore insect and then run the cell, then we still get back our insert data frame. So now let's take this a bit more further by using the Python dictionaries instead of a single Python list. I'm going to create a variable called animals and set it equals to curly brackets. So as we all know, we use curly bracket to create dictionaries in Python. Now for the first item inside our dictionary, I'm going to say mammals, then a column. So I'm going to create a list of mammals using the square bracket syntax, then single quote. For the first mammal, it's going to be cow, then a comma, single quote, then the second mammal, which is sheep, comma, then the last mammal on the list, which is lion. So after the square bracket, I'm going to add a comma, then for the second item in our dictionary, I'm going to say reptiles, then a column, and then pass in the square bracket. Now for the first reptile, I'm going to pass in crocodile, comma, and single quote, then lizard, comma, single quote, then snake. Again, after the square bracket, I'm going to add a comma. For the last item in our dictionary, which is going to be insect, then a column, and then square bracket. So the first insect is going to be ants, comma, then we have cricket, then a comma, and then B. So here is our Python dictionary of animal species completed. So when I say type and then pass in animals variable, then we see it of type dictionary. Now to convert this dictionary into a pandas data frame, I'm going to say pd then dot data frame. And in between the parentheses, I'm going to pass in our animals dictionary. Again, I'm going to store the data frame in a separate variable called data underscore animals. Then I'm going to call our data underscore animals. And when I run the cell, then we get back a pandas data frame with three columns. So mammals, reptiles, and insects inside our dictionary are the column names of our pandas data frame. Now let's say I want to get a single column from my data frame of animals. Then we say data underscore animals. Then 
use the square brackets and then single quotes. So we're going to pass in the name of the column we want to get from our data frame. Let's say mamas and then run the cell. Now we get the column of mamas from the data frame. But not just using the square bracket syntax. Another wonderful way to get a column from pandas data frame is using the dot notation. So I can say data underscore animals, then dots, and then the name of the column we want to get from our data frame. This time I'm going to say reptiles and then run the cell. Now, if you notice, the structure of the column is different from our animal data frame. So let's check to see the data type of this structure. I'm going to say type, then wrap everything in parentheses. And when I run the code, then we get pandas.core.series.series. So in pandas, a single column of data is called series. And the difference with the data frame is that a data frame is basically a container or group of multiple series. For example, if we look at our data frame, it contains columns of data like mammals, reptiles, and insects. So as I mentioned, each of these individual columns of data is called series. And the whole collection or group of this series is called a pandas data frame. Now, let me introduce you to a useful method in pandas, which is accessing a row of data. So we saw how we can access a particular column, which we got a pandas series. But if we want to access a particular row from our data frame, I'm going to call the data frame, which is data underscore animals. Then we say dot iloc and then we add the square brackets and in between the square brackets we're going to pass in the index of a particular row from our data frame. Now let's say we want to access the first row then I'm going to pass in the value 0. When I run the cell then we get the first row of our data frame. So to access the second row ship lizard and cricket then i'm going to copy this statement and then paste inside the cell below then instead of zero i'm going to pass in one so when i run the cell then we get back the second row of our data frame now if we check the type of this row of data and then run the cell then we get back a pandas.core.series so both rows and columns of data are called series in pandas. Again, let's say we want to get the first and the second row from our data frame. Then I'm going to copy the statement here and then paste on a new cell below. So instead of just a single index of row from our data frame, I'm going to add a list of indexes, zero, comma, then one. When I actually run the cell, then we get back the first and the second row. And this gives us back a pandas data frame since we are getting the first and the second row of the data frame, which is also a group of series. So now that we've seen the basis of grabbing certain rows and columns from a small data frame, in the next lecture, we're going to be working with our data set that we downloaded at the beginning of this course. We're going to see how we can grab rows and columns from the sales dataset. See you in the next lecture. And as always, take care. In the previous lecture, we looked at data frames and series. And you saw how we can create our data frame using Python data types like list and dictionaries. So in this lecture, we're going to be looking at indexes in pandas. Previously, we loaded our sales data in the form of a CSV file and stored that in a variable called data. Now, down at the bottom of our notebook, I'm going to change my cell here to markdown. 
and then add a comment called indexes and then run the cell. So now let's have a look of our data. So I'm going to say data.head then parentheses and when I execute the cell then we get a glance of our first five rows of our data frame. So the value you see right here are called the index and indexing in pandas simply means selecting a particular row and column of data from a data frame and we saw that in the last video where we use the value of the index to get a particular data from our data frame. So to illustrate with our sales data, I'm going to call my data frame and then pass in the iLock attributes which stands for integer location and then in between the square brackets, I'm going to pass in the index value of the row that we want to pull out from our data frame. Let's say 4 and then run the cell. So here we get the data from the fourth row of our data frame. Now if you look at our data frame, the index is actually in form of integer value. And that's the reason we use the iLock attribute which stands for integer location. But sometimes we want to work with data frames which its indexes has a name. And your data might come with named indexes in the future. So I'm going to show you how you can set individual names for the index of data frames. For example, instead of the integer value here for our data frame index, we're going to use any of the column here as our data frame index. So to do that, here on where we loaded our data, I'm going to add a comma, then index underscore column equals to single quote, then we're going to pass in the state column and then run the code. Again, I'm going to run this cell to see the first 10 rows of our data frame. Now, as you can see, instead of the integer index we saw previously, we have a data frame with named index. And we can also execute this cell to see the tail of our data frame, which is pretty awesome, right? Now, if we scroll down to the bottom of our notebook, we're going to write the code to access rows from our data frame. So I'm going to update this cell. Then here on this cell is the code we wrote to get rows using integer location. But now we have a named index for our data frame. So instead of the i lock, we remove the i and also get rid of the value 4. Since we are not working with integers, I'm going to add single quote. Then the name of the index we're going to grab from our data frame. Let's say California. And when I run the cell, then we see that we got back all the rows of the index California from our data frame. And when we scroll down, we will see all the number of rows with the index California from our data frame which is about 300 rows. So if I also want to get the rows from a different state using our named index, I'm going to copy the code from my previous cell and then paste on a new cell here. I'm going to pass in Colorado and then run the cell. Now we get back all the rows from our data frame that has the name index Colorado, which as you can see, it actually 260 rows of data. So now let me actually show you something even cooler. You see, when we use the iLock attribute using the index name of Colorado and California, then we get back multiple rows of data. But let's say we want to have our rows get its unique name. Instead of multiple rows with the same name, then we would have to create an array or list of unique names for each of these rows of data. So to illustrate how this is done, I'm going to collect a sample of five rows from our data and set each row to a unique name index. So I'm going to create a variable called new underscore data and set its value to five rows from our data frame, which is going to be 
data dot head and when i call new underscore data then we get back a data frame of five rows of data now the next thing i'm gonna do is to create the indexes of these five rows in other words what i'm gonna do is to give these five rows of data and individual names instead of the integer values we got from pandas automatically so i'm gonna create a variable called indexes and set it equals to a python list then i'm gonna add a single quote then the first item which is gonna be one comma then single quote then two another comma and single quote then three and then four then finally single quote and then five so here is our indexes in the form of a python list and to set these indexes to our data frame i'm gonna say new underscore data then dot set underscore index then in between the parentheses i'm gonna pass in square brackets then the list of our indexes finally i'm gonna add a comma then say in place equals to true then i can also call new underscore data and also run the cell now we can see that the names of our individual indexes have been changed to the names inside our python list so now if we want to access any row from this data frame i'm going to say new underscore data and then use the lock attributes then square brackets and pass in the name of the index we want to grab from this data frame so i'm going to add single quote then pass in the name two so when we run the cell then we get back the second row from our data frame again i can also say new underscore data then that's lock square bracket and this time we want to grab the fifth row from our data frame and then run the cell now we get back the fifth row from our pandas data frame and when we actually check to see the type of this data we got from our data frame and then run the cell then we get back a pandas series so this wraps up our tutorial on indexing and you saw how to use the iLock and the lock attribute to grab data using indexes and also how to set a particular column as an index of a particular data frame so in the next lecture we're going to be looking at filtering rows and columns of data using pandas see you in the next lecture take care so in this lesson we're going to be looking at filtering data with pandas so filtering is one of the main things to look at when working with pandas because it's basically how we begin every project by filtering the data that we want from the data that we don't want so now i'm going to change our cell here to a markdown cell and then create a comment let's call it filtering data and then run the cell now let's see if we can apply some filtering techniques to our sales data here so for example let's say we want to look at the data with the highest number of cells from our data frame and if you remember our data has about 42,000 rows of data so we want to filter out those rows with the highest number of cells so in order to do that first we're going to create a filter and we're going to call this filter highest underscore sales and set this equals to parentheses and in between the parentheses we're going to pass in our condition so i'm going to pass in our data then square bracket then we're going to grab in our sales column so now i'm going to apply my condition which goes data with sales value greater than 300 and then run the cell so if we type highest underscore sales and then run the cell then 
we see that we get back a series of Boolean values. And what this means is that for each value of sales, which is greater than 300, then it's going to be true. Then for sales value less than 300, then it's going to be false Boolean. Now, we're going to apply this series as a filter to our data frame. To do that, I'm going to say data dot lock square bracket then I can pass in our filter of highest underscore sales when I run the cell now we can see that all of the values of sales from our data frame are over or greater than 300 and when I scroll down a bit then we can see that we have over 600 rows of data where the value of sales are greater than 300 so we can also grab certain number of columns. For example, we can grab product and profit. So I'm going to copy our cell above and then paste it right below here. Then add a comma and then list of columns we want to filter from the data frame. So we want to grab the product column, comma, single quote, and then profit, another comma, then also we're going to grab in sales when i run the cell now we can see that we got not only the values of sales greater than 300 but we are also getting the columns of profit and product however another interesting thing to note here is that we can also do some filtering with multiple values so for example we can filter our sales data frame based on the categories of products we have. Now, for us to know how many categories of products we have here, I'm going to call my data frame, then square brackets, then single quotes. Now, I'm going to pass in the product column. So, the next thing I'm going to do is to add the dot .unique function. So, in Pandas, we use the unique method to get the unique values of series objects. And then run the cell. Now, here we get all the unique categories of products that are inside our sales data frame. So now, we're going to create our new filter with some of these categories of products. I'm going to create a variable called products and set it equals to a list. So in between the list is where I'm going to add my list of products. I'm going to copy out green tea here and then paste inside our list of first products. Then copy out lemon, comma, then paste for the second product. Then copy mint, another comma, and paste for the third product. So we're going to create a filter based on these three list of products and then run the cell. Now, if we want the sales where the products are green tea, lemon and mint then you can simply say filter equals to our data frame of products then dot where the product is in and we want the product to be inside the list of products we created above and then run the cell now we're going to apply this filter to our data frame which is going to be data dot lock then pass in our filter and when I run the cell then we see that we get back a new data frame but this time we get only the rows of data where the item inside the product column is either green tea, lemon or mint. Now we've covered the basis of filtering data with pandas and this wraps up our tutorial. So in the next lecture we're going to be looking at how to add and remove columns from our data frame and also how to combine information from multiple columns. And if you have any questions from this video regarding filtering data, feel free to ask in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer them. And if you enjoy this tutorial and find it useful, you can support by hitting the like and subscribe button. So thanks for watching. And I'll see you in my next video. Take care.
In this lecture, we're going to learn how to modify existing rows and columns in our data frame. But first, we're going to look at updating columns, then learn how to update some rows. But when you look at our data frame, in the previous lessons, we set the column state to be the index of our data frame. So back to the top of our notebook, where we loaded our data, we're going to remove the index underscore column here and then run the cell. Now, if we look at the head of our data frame, then it's normal. We have the state column and pandas automatically give us a default index values. So now we're gonna run all our cells in our Jupyter notebook. So click on cell and then run all. But seems we have a problem. When I scroll top a little bit, now here is the problem we are actually trying to access the index california from our data frame but now our data frame only has an integer value for the indexes so i'm gonna comment it out and then run the cell also the next cell i'm gonna select and then comment it out and then run the cell so what I'm actually going to do is to click on cell and then run all below. Now we have our data frame with the state column instead of being as the index of our data frame. Now before we start, I'm going to create a header by changing the cell type here from code to markdown and then type updating rows and columns and then run the cell. So. If we want to look at the column names of our data frame, I'm going to say data, then dot columns. When I run the cell, then we get back the column names of our data frame. And one thing that you might typically see is accessing a particular column of data frame using the dot notation. For example, if I want to access products, then I can say data dot product. When I run the cell, then we get back the product column from our data frame. But one thing to note here is that this method does not apply to all type of column names. For example, if you look at the column for total expenses, market size, and product type, they all have space in between each word. And if we try to access, let's say, the product type column, using the dot notation and then run the cell. Then we get back a syntax error because pandas doesn't expect an extra space when using the dot notation in accessing columns of data. So what we might do is to add an underscore in between these words instead of spaces. And to replace these spaces, we're gonna use the replace method in Python. So I'm gonna say, data dot columns and then dot str and then change the dot replace method so in between the parentheses we're going to replace empty spaces comma single quote with an underscore when i run the cell then we can see the underscore in our column names so i can store all of this as our data dot columns and then run the cell. Now let's look at our data frame. So when I say data.head and then run the cell, then here we can see our column names with an underscore. And I can also access one of the column when I say data.product underscore type and then run the cell. Then we can see that we get back a series of data from our product type column. However, let's say we want to rename any of the column name here from our data frame. Then we're going to use the rename method from pandas. So I'm going to say data.rename. In between the parentheses, we're going to say columns equals to a dictionary. And the key is going to be the value we want to rename from our data frame. Let's say the column marketing column and then the new value we want to change our column name. 
which I'm going to say trade. So when I run the cell, then we see that our column name of marketing has been changed to trade. But one thing to note here is that this new name of our column has not been fully modified in our pandas data frame. Because if we call our data frame and then run the cell, then we can see that our column name is still called marketing and not trade. So to fix this, we're going to get inside our rename function and then say in place equals to true and then rerun the cell. And when I also run our data frame, now we can see our column name has been changed to trade. So now let's talk about modifying a value of row from our data frame. For example, let's say I want to modify this value of total expenses from the third row. Then I can say data, then use the log attribute. In between the square brackets, I'm going to pass in the index of that row value, which is going to be 2, then the column name, which is total expenses. Now I'm going to set this to the value 500 and then run the cell. So if we look at our data and then run the cell, then we can see that the value of total expenses from the third row has been modified to 500. Now, let me show you another way to change a single value from Pandas data frame. So, I'm going to copy the code right here and then paste on our cell below. Instead of the log attributes in Pandas, we're going to use the at attribute. And one thing to note is that the at attribute is generally faster than the log attribute for accessing a single value from Pandas data frame. Then, we're going to set the value to 700 and then run the cell. And if we look at our data and then run the cell, then we see the value has been changed to 700. So this wraps up our tutorial on modifying rows and columns of data using Pandas. If you enjoyed this tutorial and find it useful, you can support by hitting the like and subscribe button. So thanks for watching. And I'll see you in my next video. Take care. Hi, and welcome to this lecture on adding and removing columns of Pandas data frame. So we're going to start by seeing how to add a new column. Let's say I want to add a new column, which is going to be the combination of total expenses and sales. Then I'm going to say, data with the column index of total underscore expenses plus data with the index of sales. Then I'm going to set all of this in a new variable called new underscore column and then run the cell. Now if we take a look at our new underscore column, then we can see that we got back a series, which is the combination of sales and total expenses. So now we're going to add this series to our data frame, which is data, then the column name of new underscore column, and then run the cell. Now, if we take a look at our data, then we can see that we got back a new column of new underscore column, which is the addition of total expenses and sales. So this is how we add columns in pandas. Now, let's now look at removing a particular column from a data frame. Let's assume we don't want the product and market size column. So to remove this, we're going to use the drop method on our pandas data frame. We're going to say data.drop method. And we want to drop the columns, which is equals to the list of column names we want to drop from our data frame. So. I want to delete the product column, comma, and then the market size. So if we run the cell, then we get back our data frame without those columns. Again, don't forget to note that these changes are not made to our original data frame. 
when I say data and then run the cell, then we still get back the product and market size column. So to apply these changes to our original data frame, I'm going to add a comma and then pass in in place equals to true and then run the cell. Again, when I run our data frame, then we no longer have the product and the sales columns. However, another interesting way is using the index parameter to drop rows of data. Let's say I want to drop the entire data from the first row of our data frame. Then we're going to say data.drop. In between the parentheses, we're going to say index equals to the value of index we want to drop from our data frame, which is zero and then run the cell now we can see that we no longer have the data from the first row of our data frame so this wraps up our tutorial on adding and removing rows and columns of data from pandas data frame so in the next lecture we're going to be looking at sorting data in pandas i'll see you in the next lecture take care Hi, welcome to this lecture on how we're going to be looking at sorting data in Pandas. We will also cover how to sort data in ascending or descending order and how to sort data by multiple columns. So I'm going to add a markdown cell and then type sorting data. Then we're going to have to look at our data frame and then run the cell. Now. Let's start by sorting our data by a single column. We're going to use the sort values method in pandas. For example, I'm going to say data, then say dot sort values method. Then we're going to pass in by equals to a column name. And based on this column name, our data frame is going to be sorted to. So I'm going to say sales. And when we run the cell, then we can see that we get back a data frame return where the values of sales are sorted in ascending order. And one thing to note is that we can also sort our data frame by multiple columns. We can pass in a list of column names to the by parameter. For example, I'm going to sort our data frame by the column sales and also by the trade column in descending order. So I'm going to copy our cell here and then paste right below here and then change cells here to a Python list, then add a comma. Then the second column name we're going to sort our data frame to, which is going to be trade. And finally, I'm going to say ascending equals to false and then run the cell. Now we can see that our data frame have been sorted based on the sales and the trade columns where the values of these columns are sorted in descending order meaning from the highest to the lowest values however we can also sort our entire data frame by its index values so i'm gonna say data then dot sort underscore index and in between the parentheses we're gonna say ascending equals to false and then run the cell now we can see that we get back a new data frame but this time all the rows from our data frame are sorted by the data frame indexes in descending order now if we want to sort a particular series from our data frame let's say the column market then we're going to grab that column by saying data with the column name of market then chain the sort underscore values method and then run the cell. Now we can see that our series of markets have been sorted alphabetically. So we've covered the basis of sorting data frames in pandas. And in the next lecture, we're going to be looking at handling missing values in pandas data frame. So I'll see you in the next lecture. Take care. Hello and welcome to this tutorial on cleaning data 
in Pandas, as well as how to save our data to different file formats like CSV files, Excel sheets, JSON files, and many more. So I'm going to add a markdown cell which goes by the name cleaning data and then run the cell. So let's take a look to how to identify missing values in your data. So to check for missing values in a data frame, we're going to say data, then call the dot is no method from pandas. Then finally, we're going to change the dot sum method and then run the cell. Now we get back a series from our column names. Also, the number of missing values from each column in our data frame. So in pandas, we can use the dot is no method and the sum method to count the number of none or missing values in each column of data frame. So now, let's say we want to get rid of these missing values from our data frame. Then, one thing we might typically do is to drop any row from our data frame that contains missing values. And to do that, we're going to use the drop na method in pandas. So I'm going to say data, then drop na. And in between the parentheses, I'm going to pass in in place equals to true and then run the cell. Now let's check our data frame for null or missing values. So I'm going to say data, then add the dot is null method, and then change the sum method. When we run the cell, then we can see that now our data frame has no missing values from any of the columns. So in pandas, we use the dot is null method to remove any rows from our data frame that contains at least one missing value. So on final section of this course, let's see how to save our data frame into different file formats like CSV files, Excel, JSON files, and so on. We're going to save our data to file on our computer. So I'm going to say data, then dot two underscore, and then press the tab key. Now we can see the different file formats we can save our data frame to. So I'm going to select on CSV. So we use the two underscore CSV function to save our data frame into a CSV file. And in between the parentheses, I'm going to pass in a single quote, then the name we want to save our file to on our computer, which I'm going to say new underscore sales, then dot CSV, and then press shift enter to run the cell. Now, if we check our project folder, then we see the file saved locally on our computer as new underscore sales dot CSV. So congratulations for your hard work. We've now come to the end of our tutorial on complete pandas course. And you can find the source code and the data for this project on my GitHub page. And I will drop the link to the repository in the video description below. And on that note, I'm going to be releasing various tutorials on data science and machine learning, web development with HTML, CSS and JavaScript, and many more to come. So make sure to hit the subscribe button for these upcoming tutorials. See you next time. And as always, take care.